everyone, this is Dina Cedillo and today I would like to share with you um, how I've done a night fishing scene using the Blue Night Rubber Stance Gone Fishing Set. Um, this was the first one that I was playing with. It's a little smaller. I used the cattails and one of the birds. And this is done with pan pastels. And then here are two more that I experimented with. Um, I like the. I'm going to use the grass today. I like the way that looks. But one thing that I wanted to show you, um, I've pre-stamped my image out with the um, memento black, tuxedo black, and gone ahead and masked off the water. But something I wanted to show you about uh, masking my water. So if you'll notice in this one, my water line comes way down here underneath where the shadow of the boat is starting. I, what I did is I lined it up with this end of the boat. And I didn't like the way that looked because the shadow was coming out of the water. And I felt like the shadow needed to be in the water. So for this one, I lined up my post-it notes with this side of the stamp so that the shadow's in the water. And this side's fine if it's in the water a little bit more because the boats, when you're sitting in a boat, when you're fishing in the lake, they tilt up anyway, right? So, line up, if, if this is what you, you want to do, line up your um, masking on this side of the boat rather than this side. Okay, so today I'm going to use pan pastels. I'm going to be using turquoise, thalo blue, thalo blue extra dark, and probably some black. So, to get started, I'm going to start with my mid-tone. You know what? Actually, I forgot. I need to get my moon in the in the scene. This is a uh, two and a half inch circle that I punched out. Um, I think I'm gonna try to get both of those guys in the in the moon. Okay. And oh, and I meant to tell you, uh, this piece of paper is. Uh, let's see, a six and a quarter by four and a quarter. It's a little bit bigger than the cards that I usually make for these scenes. Like this one's much smaller. I don't remember the dimensions, but it's much smaller. Um, so anyway, let me start. I think I'll start with my mid-tone. And I'm just going to get it all the way on the page. Okay, now I'm going to add some of my darker color, the thalo blue extra dark, and sort of work my way in. Looks like I have a few defects in the paper there. Or maybe it's just where I scratched it or who knows. But that's okay because I'm going to be stamping over those little areas anyway.
And as you'll notice, I'm leaving it a little lighter around where the moon is because, of course, the sky would be a little bit brighter. It would be brighter in those areas and a little darker over here. Where there's not quite so much moonshine. Okay. And I think I am going to use a little bit of black just up here in the corner. do the water line. Now for this, for this particular picture, I do want to leave a little bit of white along the top, so I'm going to try anyway to be really careful not to get any of the color up there. If I do, that's okay. But I'm going to start with my lightest color. And I want to put more of the lighter color here on this area where the moon is. And a little, I'm going to go a little bit darker on this side. Or at least that's what I'm going to try to do. Hopefully it'll work. Okay, so you notice, this is what's great about these, these edges. I love them. I have more control with that rounded edge. And I'm just, I'm using the edge of it. I'm not laying it flat. I'm tilting it. And I'm just using the very, very edge. So that hopefully... I can leave that white area. Okay, and you're probably wondering why I'm going ahead, going ahead and going over this image since I'm going to stamp there anyway. And the reason is I've found that if I don't, it doesn't stamp out exactly the same. It just it looks a little different. <clears throat> it looks a little different where the um, where there is no pan pastel from the stamp than it does. I don't know if that makes sense. So I am now, and now I am laying it flatter. I want to get some more of this color here where the moon shines, more of the light color. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my thalo blue. You notice I'm not laying it on real heavy right now because I do want to go darker down here so I want to leave enough or my paper is going to still pick up the dark color. I went a lot heavier up here in the sky. But And the reason I'm actually doing this a little slower is so that it gives me a little bit more control of how much color I'm laying down and where my colors are going. Okay. okay now I'm going to go... Let's see the right sponge here. Now I'm going back to my Thalo Blue Extra Dark. Okay. 
and I'm just trying to shade in a little bit. Make the water a little lighter as I'm getting up closer to the top. I'm still trying to be careful to leave this area a little bit lighter where the moon's shining. See, as I'm laying more color down, the pastels are actually blending together pretty well. Okay. Okay. You know what I think? I'm going to put a little bit of black. Because I'm going to put my, my cattails and down here in the corner. And plus it also helps frame my picture in a little bit. There. Okay, now for the moon. So, and the moon's actually very easy. So, just remove your mask. Okay, and I'm going to start with my lightest color. I want the moon, most of the moon, to be really light because obviously the moon's going to be lighter than anything else, right? That's where our light source is coming from. And I do want to leave, I think I'm going to leave this edge right, well, let's see. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave this side right here, uh, white. I'm going to try to leave a little edge of white and that again was where using this very very edge of your of your rounded sponge that's where it comes in very handy because you have control, you have more control over what you're doing. you can see and I hope what I'm telling you is making sense okay. I'm going to move back to my mid-tone which is my thalo blue. Okay. What I want to do here is I just don't want to go in as far. I find a different section that's got some. So again, so I can have a little more control, I want to use these rounded corners. <clears throat> I am again. I am trying to cover where these where these guys are so that my image will stamp out as even as I can get it. Just a little slower so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now see how I'm doing the same thing, but I'm just not going in as far. Another way to do this is um, you could always get the, the um, you know, where you punched out your circle. 
use the negative part of that paper and put it around here so that all you have is showing is your moon. And then you can just, and then you don't have to worry about getting into the sky area. But even if you do, it really doesn't matter because it actually all blends really well. See, I'm actually going into the sky a little bit. And it's not really making a difference, that much difference. My paper's trying to get away from me. Okay, and then I want to go to my darker color. My phthalo blue extra dark. And I want the darkest color on this side of the moon. And now I'm not going as far over, not going as far over as I did with the lighter colors. I'm going to go back and add a little bit more of the thallow blue. Just a touch more of the turquoise. Okay. Now all we have to do is stamp. So I wanted to show you, I'm going to do <clears throat> my fishing boat, I'm going to do that in Versifying Claire, in the Versifying Claire Nocturne, okay, and the reason I'm going to do this in the Versifying Claire is because it will stamp out just a little bit, a little bit lighter. And then the archival ink, which I'm going to use for the cattails and for and for the trees. Okay, so and as you know, it always takes more than one pass, especially with pan pastels. Okay. I think I'll do one more. Because it still needs some down here. Give that a minute to soak in. There. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what we can do is we can stamp in our cattails. So for the cattails, I am going to use another Blue Night stamp. It's called Silhouette Cattails. Okay, and for this particular picture, if you'll notice on the um, on the stamp itself, it does have a whole foreground image. But for this particular scene, I just want the cattails. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm not going to get this this ground part on my scene. And also, I'm going to have to stamp them one at a time because it's too small for the size picture that I chose. Okay, so let's do this side first. Okay. 
Okay, so now I'm, I'm going to stamp this one out. <clears throat> I'm going to use, um, I'm just going to use Ranger Archival Ink, Jet Black. And the, the reason for this, the reason I'm not using the VersaFine Claire for this is because this will stamp out just a little bit darker. At least I hope it will. Because I want this, this is in my foreground, so I I would like this to be darker. And you know what? I'm gonna. I think this pad's dry. Let me switch to some Marvy ink. I forgot to, I forgot to re-ink that pad. So I'm just switching over to the to the Marvy, the Marvy black. I do wait a second and give it a chance to soak in. Okay, I think I'll do one more pass with that one. Okay. I don't know if you can tell, but this is darker than the the image and the images from the VersaFine Claire. It just seems like the um, for the with the pan pastels, it seems like the VersaFine Claire just soaks in a little bit. Like it soaks in a little bit more or something. I don't know. I don't know how all these inks work work together with other mediums. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing with my cattails on the other side. So. Okay, so, sorry, I was just like totally out of frame there. Okay, so I don't want the, the, cat, the foreground on my image, or on my scene. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, and like I showed you when we started, I have the grass for this one, which I like the way that came out with the grass. So to do the grass, I'm going to use another um, Blue Night stamp. It's called Flamingos, Fl Flamingos and Wild Grass. Okay. So I'm just going to use the wild grass part of it, not the flamingos. And I just want to use, I'm not going to use all of this over here. I'm just going to stamp up to right here. Okay. And again, I'm going to do this in Marby Black. There we go. Okay, now I see something that I don't like that I did, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you. 
Okay. And you see how I only wanted I only wanted to go up to right here. I actually went further. See, I accidentally stamped further into it, and it made part of it there. I don't want that there, and I can't remove it. Right. So I'm going to get my my marker. I'm going to use my Micron Archival Ink Black Pen. And I'm just going to put some grass in front of it. And that's not going very dark, so when all else fails, when all else fails, switch to a Tombow marker. bit extra here. Okay, notice that kind of hides it a little bit. <clears throat> I still see it because I really didn't want that there, but I think most people, when they would look at the picture and they take in the overall scene, they're not even going to notice. So, um, okay, so now let's stamp some trees. So for my trees, I'm going to use the other part of the Silhouette Cattails. And what I've done, the, the stamp actually comes all in one, but what I've done is I've cut my trees out because I like to use them in different ways instead of just, instead of just being limited to using them one way. I can do them however I want. So, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I got to... <clears throat> frog or something in my throat today. That's what they say, right? You have a frog in your throat? Now well, that frog got there. And again, I'm using Marby Black because I want this in my foreground. So I would like it a little darker. In the boat. And we'll do another one coming in from this side. And remember those scratches that I were that were showing on my paper from a little earlier? Um, I stamped over there, but there's one still showing there, and I don't like that right there. So I'm just going to use the little tip of that side and stamp over it. All right, that's what you can do when you get smudges and stuff. Like me, I'm the I think I'm just the queen of ink smears and smudges, especially in my skies. So half the time I end up with a bird. Just try to cover it. Okay, and I keep looking at this, and that still bothers me. 
So, I am going to go back to my cattails. And I'm going to stamp some extra cattails. So I'm just going to move it further down. So these ones are up here. So I'm going to bring it further down. Make them a little shorter so it's like just the tops of them. And hopefully that'll help cover that mistake, that mess I made down there. Okay. What do you think? Does that help it out any? And I think also probably what I would do, I would take a little more time to fix this one and I would probably draw in <clears throat> some of my own my own cattails. Okay, now one other thing I forgot to show you, and I should have done it before I stamped the boat, but if you're, if you're thinking about where the light's coming from and, and the reflection in the water, since the, sun, the moon's behind the boat, I'm imagining a shadow being cast this way. So in order to do that shadow, I would probably go with my darkest blue, the thallo blue extra dark. And I would probably, and I, like I said, I should have done this first before I stamped. Because I don't want to put the pan pastels on top of the, on top of the image that's been stamped. So let's see if I can just do it without getting on it too much, on top of it too much. See how it's kind of smearing it a little bit? And that's why I should have done it first. Oh well, stamping's an adventure, right? So anyway, you get the idea. So that, does that kind of look like a shadow? You know what? In fact, it's okay that it's smeared because... Maybe it looks a little, uh, it's okay to look a little smeared because it's in water, right? Okay, does that kind of look like a shadow? So anyway, you get the idea, and I don't know, I hope all that made sense to you.